Hey, what's going on guys? With the recent reveal of the entire Nexomon Extinction Nexopedia, I wanted to go over the various starter evolutions as, like myself, I'm sure a lot of you are very curious to know what your starter is going to evolve into before you actually choose it. If you don't know, Nexomon Extinction is a monster taming RPG that has you exploring various regions and capturing various monsters known as Nexomon. The game's graphical style is really sharp and the monster design looks pretty cool as well. This game is a sequel to the original Nexomon that takes place several hundred years later. Anyways, with all that being said, I don't want to waste too much time on the intro because we have nine starters to get through. Yeah, that's right. There's nine starter Nexomon, uh, one for each type. The types being normal, fire, water, plant, mineral, wind, electric, psychic, and ghost. We did do an unscripted video sort of talking about the uh, base forms of the Nexomon starters and the game as a whole. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But today I wanted to go through each of the starters and their evolutions, personalities, their stat distributions for the fully evolved ones, and of course their designs. So with all that being said, have a seat, relax, and let's jump right into this. First up is a normal type starter, and keep in mind that all Nexomon are monotyped. Uh, Dinja, this cute little doggo. It's described as having very short appendages. As a result, it's not very good at running, so it instead resorts to hopping about. Despite Despite this, it seems to be relatively fast given the fact that its speed stat is literally double that of every other stat, individually. At level 15, Dinja is going to evolve into Dichala, a bigger doggo. Considered to be fierce hunters of the prairies, Dichala utilizes its swift movements to strike. It of course has an impeccable sense of both smell and hearing. At level 32, it's going to evolve into Nemancy, which kind of looks like a cat dog, but then again, I don't know anything about dog breeds, so maybe that's just me that sees that. Nemancy are considered to be the kings of the prairie, standing tall and prideful with its triple tails. It uses both of these to confuse and trap their opponents. Now, interestingly, Nemancy is actually very slow, which is a direct contrast to its first form. It seems to have dropped its speed in favor of its HP attack and defense, almost kind of representing that idea of ascending from what once was a creature that had to utilize its speed to uh, sort of outmaneuver to a king that doesn't fear combat. I actually really like the design as it encapsulates that sort of majestic but fierce attitude given its sharp claws, mane, and tails. Next up is a fire starter, Lume or Loom. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce its name, but anyways, this fiery cat, um, it burns kids. I'm not sure if that's on purpose, but yeah, if you try to pet this thing, you're gonna get burned. None of that rapid-ash friendship stuff going on here. After you decide to engulf enough children in flames to get this little guy up to level 16, it's going to evolve into Lumifer. Lumifer's flame that was once present on its head has now evolved alongside it into a mane. This small beast is described as being the perfect balance of power, speed, and agility. I'm assuming this makes it more efficient in its ability to burn people, so that's great too. After you level it up to level 34, it's going to evolve again into Lumeri. Lumeri is described as having a a combination of intense fire coupled with its sharp fangs and claws making one of the most intimidating opponents. Much like the last starter evolution we saw, Lumeray also drops its speed in favor of its other stats. You're going to see that this becomes a trend. The water type starter Noki is described as being an amphibious flying Nexomon with a heroic spirit coupled with self-confidence and loyalty. It's pretty simple yet intriguing in terms of design and I like how it looks. Uh, once you decide to level it up to level 17, you're going to get Vaynoch. Vaynok is said to be equipped with both a water cannon and a long tail, making them great at capturing their opponents and even better at not getting caught themselves. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't see a water cannon on this thing. Perhaps it's just the name of an attack? Or maybe... At level 36, Vaynok will evolve into Hainok, an incredibly fast bird with the ability to walk on water. Now, interestingly, when we look at this one's base stats, its speed's only 10. And this is, again, a trend so far with these evolutions. The starters are progressively getting slower. It's just weird to me how this thing is noted as being super fast with a slower speed stat than its pre-evolution. And not only its pre-evolutions, the pre-evolutions of the starters we've already explored. Now this could just be a Nexomon thing, I'm not too sure because I haven't quite played the first game and haven't found any answers on it while researching, but I do find it kind of odd how the evolutions seem to be much slower. Other than that, I do really like its design. The owl aesthetic with the double tail just, you know, just does it for me. Next is Mara, the plant type starter. It's also kind of looking like a cat. It's described as being charming and intelligent, it uses said charm for its own benefit. So yeah, it's basically my cat. I do think the plant type has a very strong set of designs and I like what they did with the sort of leaf mane that they gave Mara. After leveling it up to level 15, it's going to evolve into Marasima. Okay, maybe it's not a cat. Marasimas are full of deception, from its mystic eyes to its body underneath the foliage. It's ready to strike with its multiple horns. At level 32, it's going to evolve into Roxima. Roxima are described as being tall and elegant creatures. They're also said to be the guardians of the forest. They prefer not to fight with other Nexomon if possible. Once again, the base stats follow that trend with it having slightly more balanced defense attack and HP than the others. On a side note, I didn't mention this, but it seems that Nexomon don't actually have special attack and special defense. I'm not really sure how I feel about that because it's going to make a lot of them feel same-ish. 
Next up is my personal favorite, Trebly, this mineral type dino guy. Trebly are said to chiefly enjoy showing off the durability of their horns. Headbutting competitions are all but commonplace with these Nexomon. This one evolves pretty early at level 12 into Trey Clay, and Trey Clay are described as great hunters using their heads to dig mountain passes by smashing them. I guess those headbutt competitions came in handy. After leveling it up to level 29, also pretty early, you'll get Tracer. Now, Tracer are described as being abnormally resistant to physical attacks and are able to quickly change their tails to either be as soft as mud or as hard as steel, making it quite versatile. Its stats show in that it has a very high HP and defense. Next up is the wind type starter, Mirn, another feline creature, and it's described as being a lot less friendly than it looks. They're quite feral and live on the prairies and highlands. Their entangled tails allow them to utilize the power of the wind, hence its typing. After leveling it up to level 17, it evolves into Falarnia. Falarnia are said to be masters of the wind and capable of utilizing their ability to perform double jumps to hunt airborne prey. It's going to evolve into Yarnesti at level 36. Yarnesti are said to manipulate the wind to their advantage, making them very calm yet capable hunters. I'm not a big fan of this line to be honest, I don't necessarily dislike them, but I'm also not very captivated by them either. They're not bad designs, just not my taste personally. The electric type starter Gekoko is said to be a very cautious Nexomon with the ability to walk on any surface thanks to its sticky feet. They enjoy hiding from others and remain isolated for long periods of time. This is actually another one that I really like. Its design, like a lot of others, is simple and not overtly complicated. It's literally just an electric gecko, which looks really cool. At level 15, it's going to evolve into Camelevo. Camelevo, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, are both sneaky and lightning fast. Using their electrical capabilities, they can charge their skin cells through conduction in order to change colors. At level 32, they're going to evolve into Repto Motor. Repto Motor are supposedly insanely fast, much like their pre-evolution. They have the ability to conceal their presence by changing color, though rarely use it due to the fact that they're very confident in their abilities. Again, though apparently being super fast, its base stat for speed is only 10, which is really peculiar to me. With there only being four stats in the game, as well as all all of these starters sharing the same low speed trope, they're all quite similar in base stats if I'm being quite honest. But like I said before, there is a chance that I'm missing something here, so just keep that in mind. Also on a side note, and um, this is something that I found out after putting this video together, some of the information on this website might be outdated, so stats could change, just keep that in mind. Next up we got the Psychic type starter, aka Nightmare Fuel Cat over here. This cat legitimately creeps me out. And apparently I'm not the only one, because Musqueedy over here is oftentimes mistaken for a ghost type and apparently has an obscure sense of humor, whatever that means. When you level it up to level 16, you'll get Mascat. Mascat tend to blend in well with human society. I mean, hey guys, look, this thing blends right in. I mean, damn, I'm always just taking my face off and holding it. Apparently this is a sharp contrast to its pre-evolution. I mean, I guess, you know, the pre-evolution doesn't just, it, it should just take off its face more and it'll be more, uh, able to blend in, right? It evolves into Fila Blanco at level 34. Fila Blanco apparently have a variety of different emotions that are portrayed through its erratic fighting style, so it's basically Zant from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I'm guessing that this one fits into society really well considering it has two faces, so it doesn't even have to take one off. These are its stats and once again very similar to the previous ones. Last but not least is a ghost type starter Behilda. Okay, last time I run with this joke, but come on. It must fit in amazingly well since it didn't just take off its face, it took off its whole head. But apparently they do scare their opponents, which, I mean, how is this scary, but the cat's not? I mean, is there an exact amount, an exact percentage of head you can take off to not be scary? You know, you, you, you can get the face and that's okay, but you get the whole head? Bro, that's too much. It evolves into head deca after leveling up to level 17. Hideka are said to always smile regardless of the situation, and their free arm is used to execute powerful ghost attacks. W what a positive guy! After leveling it up to level 36, it'll evolve into Nusidil. Nusidil, unlike its pre-evolutions, actually uses all of its appendages to perform advanced ghost-like attacks, hence why its head's actually where it's supposed to be. I think this one looks really cool, actually. Uh, though more complex than some of the other Nexomon, I really like this one. I think they did a good job with it. Once again, its stats are very similar to what we've already seen with the other starters. So yeah, guys, that's a gist of the Nexomon starter evolutions. Overall, I think the majority of the designs are pretty solid, but I am curious to know what you guys think. Make sure to let me know in the comment section below which ones are your favorite favorite and uh, if you did enjoy the video make sure to like and subscribe follow me on twitter jimlier ed check out our subscriber discord all links in the description until next time peace